The Caustic Sink Launcher is a powerful tech broker variant of the Heat Sink Launcher, which operates using different mechanics from its counterpart. While the Heat Sink Launcher dumps a fixed amount of heat from within a ship's systems, the Caustic Sink absorbs caustic damage, preventing it until one charge reaches capacity, at which point the pilot can eject it. This design means that charges are very difficult to waste, with a clear, always-on UI element to show how much caustic damage has been absorbed and when a given charge has reached its capacity. Once full, any additional caustic damage bleeds through to affect the hull, but gets cleaned off after the current charge is ejected and the next one loaded in. This module has a big impact on AX combat and maelstrom exploration essentially replacing the previous methods of caustic damage prevention on offer. Ships using a caustic sink no longer need to overheat or rely on limpets to manage caustic effects. For the most stable protection, two sinks can be used so that when one is completely full, the other takes over while the full sink is ejected. The most significant factor to note is distributor draw. At 2 megawatts, it's enough that a low capacitor can cause reliability issues though not so severe as to be crippling. It remains the only tech broker module I'm aware of that has engineering capability, with blueprints matching what is available on the heatsink. The game regards this module as a variation of the heatsink, and once unlocked by tech brokers at a search and rescue ship, will appear alongside the heatsink launcher in the outfitting menu. It likewise shares the exact same visual model as its thermal counterpart, Increased ammo engineering blueprints are likely to be the most popular option available. One weakness of the Caustic Sync module is that, as of yet, there is no quick access keybind for it, meaning that the only way to start a Caustic Purge is by mapping this module to a fire group. Thankfully, the quick access button for the Heat Sync is not affected and will not auto-select a Caustic Sync when both are equipped on a given ship. Another consideration for the Caustic Sink is its low integrity, which makes it more vulnerable to Thargon Swarm attack and ship overheats. One or two clean Thargon hits can render the sink inoperable, so ventral placement is preferable. Below and behind the cockpit as far as possible is ideal. Overheating can quickly render these modules unstable, so they don't work very well on ships that must overheat during operation. Reinforced engineering blueprints can overcome this issue for some builds. A caustic sink launcher renders Thargoid caustic missiles completely ineffective, though one clean hit from an interceptor missile loads almost all of an individual sink's charge. This means that multiple rapid caustic missile strikes will overwhelm single launcher configurations. Most players are likely to find single launcher configurations sufficient for their needs especially on faster AX combat builds. The Sync Launcher also has benefits for commanders who want to salvage Thargoid hearts during or after a battle, as it's now possible to do so without waiting for a caustic cloud to fully disperse. Collector limpets are still recommended for this purpose to help reduce exposure time and intensity. Anywhere you have a decontamination limpet controller, it's now possible to add hull or module reinforcements more so if the related cargo rack can also be eliminated. This comes at the cost of a slot commonly used for heat sinks or shield boosters. So there is a trade-off, but one I find favorable for most AX builds. The caustic sink launcher does not impact detectability, so heat sink launchers still have a place, especially for ships running guardian weapons or shield cell banks. The synthesis recipe for caustic sinks is very high maintenance requiring regular trips to a Thargoid Maelstrom for the raw ingredients necessary. Replenishing these devices in combat will not be practical under most situations, which means that more of these devices will be better if you anticipate absorbing a lot of caustic damage away from port infrastructure. Inside a Maelstrom, performance is remarkable, though conditional. Remaining towards the outside of a Maelstrom, a single charge lasts about a minute with performance dropping off rapidly as you go deeper in, though the sinks do still prevent all damage while active. There is a reload transition where full caustic damage is absorbed while the caustic sink ejects a cartridge and loads the next one. For these situations, 
Having two launchers queued up on one fire group and alternating between them will work the best. Having much more than two launchers will get difficult to manage on the fire group menu. Enough that I believe this issue will be the biggest constraint which the module currently faces. The lack of a quick access hotkey is something that will need to be resolved for this module to reach its full potential. Altogether, I highly recommend that all players interested in AX Combat or Maelstrom Exploration chase this device as a priority. Over the course of a battle, it will save a ton of hull, helps close engagement distances by eliminating a significant threat, and frees up ships to spec more hull or module protection. It's easy to learn, can be readily integrated into most AX builds, and takes a major weapon of the enemy off the table. That's all I have for today, so I'll catch you all later.